Um, here we have the C-130, Hercules, L is for lives. And these planes fly in with masses of supplies, often when there's human drama, flood, famine, fire. It's a flying load bay. Let's have a bit of a cruise around it. You can see how the tail plane's been put on because I won't see any of that. These are put in to give it strength. See these things across that join there. And these fillets up here hold the tail plane on because um, that gives it strength. Cross brace there. Let's go right around this thing. There's the load door. Here's the side that you don't see. See that? It looks ludicrous, doesn't it? Because I've shortened it dramatically. So it's actually a lot like a stage set, I was thinking. Four engines, long range fuel tanks. Look at this when it falls into place, it's just so much better. So it'd be something like that. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the um, camera and start painting it now. It all goes base grey. I'm just going to take the back door off it, shorten the back door, the load door, so it gets get about that angle on it. Okay, I'm just going to start mixing here. I've got a, um, a reference up the back here, and it's a gunship grey Hercules, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be painting it all over with gunship grey to start, and then what I'll do is um, I'll put the camouflage over the top. Got to mix it right first. I've got to get it kind of blue grey. Make sure not too much black. Black is full on danger. But I've put it's got a lot of green in it. I had to put a green in it, and it seems to be right. So surprise, surprise. A bit darker. I shouldn't mix with my painting brush because what happens is. If I mix with the painting brush, it's pretty good. It's got lots of green in it. A bit more black, I think. There you go, a lot of green, two different blues, unbelievable. Never would have thought it. The hand is guarding me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to paint the whole thing, so I'm going to pick him up. Oh dear, oh dear, I haven't written the whole thing, paint the whole thing. I better write me, um, better do me colour scheme before I do. Well, the engines have got to go anyway. It's pretty dark. It's okay. Let's just paint these engines. And then what I'll do is I'll draw down the camouflage scheme. That's funny because I hadn't even thought of it. That when I paint the blue, all the camouflage that I'd marked out on the aircraft, because you can probably see... No, you can't. There's pencil lines there. They've got the whole camouflage scheme. See how I've drawn it out?
so what I'll do is I'm just using the paper over here and I'll move the stuff black green try color which of that colors on the rudder like that on that head one yeah, there it is so along the side goes over the wheel patch and like a blob up into the wing black green black green okay now I've drawn up all the um, colors so now I'm just going to paint the whole thing well, it's pretty creepy because I've spent ages building this. You just think every time first paint's going to wreck it. Something about it being pristine and sort of untouched that it's comforting in a way. No paint on it. Because then um, it could still just be terrific. You know, it can't go wrong. It's still pristine. Or it still has all the potential. Dangerous stuff. But I might give it a couple of coats anyway. I'm just having a look now. It's washing in. But um, it's not in as intense as I'd like it. It looks a bit light. So I don't know. I might end up giving it another coat. It's fun though. This is really good fun. Because I've been messing around with this thing for ages. Quite enough of it. You get to that stage where you've just had enough of it. I mean, not really. I mean, if it just means reshaping one piece of the tail again or having to take off the tails to get them right, it's, it's an adjustment process. And, um,. Sometimes you could do without it. It's quite critical. It makes you very nervous. But I love this grey. I think this is great. It's not right though. It's too. It's too sparkly. It needs to be duller. It needs more black in it. Color mix. But I'll put it. Put a base coat on it. It's always a bit more comforting. There's a lot of work going into this. There's so much stuff here that I've cut and sanded and re-sanded and shaped. But I think it's better to do two coats. I don't want one thick coat. I don't think it would look right. It's looking good. A bit too blue, probably. Funny when you're making blue-grey that it's too blue-grey. And there's not enough of it. I didn't mix enough. I've found out here.
Um, I just want to give you a bit of a tour of this. Um, we've got some other things happening here. Here's a Land Rover. I think when people are arriving in aid locations, places where they have to deliver aid, transport's incredibly important. Just as the aircraft getting in there is, um, people getting around and moving things around is important. So there's the, um, the Jeep I'm building to come out of the back of there. I'll check the size to get some video reference. I have camouflage scheme reference up here, but another thing I wanted to show you was about recycling. The spar, the main spar of this wing, which is the strength member that runs all the way across. Let's just raise that up a bit. What I've done is I've used a, um, a bamboo skewer. And I used it for workshops with kids, but it's strong enough to give the similar sort of effect to a real aircraft. It's got a spar in it. So even though it's got the flat wing, it has that strength section. I fooled around putting a propeller on. But that's a good start, isn't it? I love this next bit because I'm going to mix up the ochre and do the third colour on the camouflage. Um, you might notice here, there's some paints here, upside down. They're running out, so I'm just getting them to tip up. Okay, I'll mix the paint and I'll show you as I'm going. Now the third colour is an ochre. It's not quite this colour, which is a sandy type of ochre. The Australian one's a bit pinker, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put some ready brown up against that. I'm going to make it pink and then I'm going to try and make it a bit grey by adding a bit of a dark colour. Yeah, it sounds bizarre, doesn't it? There we go. Or maybe even some blue-grey might give it that grey tint. So pinkish. Oh, it's pretty extensive. I'm going to move it over here. Um, I was thinking about the word to describe the colour. It's kind of smoky on, um, on our current planes. Smoky sort of colour. So I'm putting some grey in. I've got a dirty brush. I've done that on purpose. You might see at the base of the brush. Uh, you can't see it, but there's a bit of grey there. I've done it purposefully to try and darken the tint. Looks good. Okay, let's give it a try. Now you must remember, I find this tremendously exciting even now. There's not a day when I'm doing something like this. That first paint, it's just as exciting as when I was a kid. It's very, very exciting. I'm a very lucky person sometimes, even though this job takes forever. Now I need a point. I'm selecting a brush. So what I'll do is, I'll mix that colour through. Make sure it's flowing. And I'll start to paint it in. Now look, I don't really expect this to coat in one because it's a very light colour over a much, much darker colour. But um, I don't mind that. I'm going to go for it and put in a light coat. I've drawn out all the lines in pencil where it's going. Use reference. Oh dear, got the wrong colour. Well, it can't be too dark, it can't be too light anyway. I quite like this smoky colour so. I may do it a bit darker on the next time through. It's 
Pretty good. It's bloody hard then. Mind you, I do like the colour, which is good. Pink. I love painted camouflage. It's just like, I don't know, it's the, um, it's like animal markings. I love it. It's not even the wall thing as much as that animal connection. So look, there's the first coat done. It does start to change the look of the thing. I don't think there's enough sand on it, but you know, that's, that's what it says. So I'm going to go with that. Good start. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the back ramp. Let's have a look at it. A bit of silvery grey to paint the back. Even though you won't see the top of it, I've painted the top too. You can see how it's not very, you know, the coat's not very good. Let's have a close look here. I'll improve that with the second coat and I might even darken it up a bit too, it looks a bit light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint inside the load bay a kind of a metallic colour because I've noticed that the ramps are all all natural metal like not zinc chromate like the aircraft finish. Strange. So I'm kind of in trouble here. I'd rather have zinc chromate. It's kind of like um, yeah, just like a neutral grey. But um, there's lots and lots of fittings and stuff on it. So I'll have a good look at them in a minute. Do. Over. What I'm going to do is just put a base coat on, a medium base coat, and then I'll camouflage over it. Slightly different colour to the aircraft one. Okay, so that's just the base coat. I might put another coat of that on before I even start with the rest of the um, camouflage. Here's the Hercules we were working on. Just let the camera rock a bit. I'm working on the Jeep that goes inside there. But right now what we'll be doing is figures. So here's the different stages of the figures. Here's a wire armature. And this person here, as you probably see, let's have a good close look at it. The idea is to get the posture. You need the feet anchored on the ground somehow. What I do is I super glue blocks down to the wire to hold them on. You can see there's a loose bit of wire there that I'm going to have to attach right there. 
but generally it's okay. This thing, this figure is going to be standing behind the aircraft and it'll be directing stuff. He's a bit big, oh, she's a bit big. It's a him, I think. He'll be over there. And then what I do is I use a silicon kit, which is like a squeeze out stuff for fixing joints like this. Sorry about the brand. One of those squeezy things. And then I squeeze that onto the frame. Now, if you have a look here, is the second stage of a figure. Here's our first figure, the wire frame only armature. I use fuse wire, 16 amp and 8 amp, just to wire things together. Now, once I've squirted that stuff on it, look, it's very lumpy. And you can see that the head's not properly shaped here. I do it in a couple of stages. If I do it all at once, I've made, I've made a... Um, See this rotates. I've done that by putting a balsa wood axle in there. So I can rotate the figure, see in there? That goes into the, it's like a cotton reel, it's my silk cotton. Okay, so here's the figure, but have a look at that, that's quite convincing, isn't it? And what you might notice is, um, over here, to the side, there was a bit of wire sticking out, but because they're wearing a belt where they carry their belongings on, like because it's a military person, you can see the rolled up sleeve there too. I'm just starting to shape things slowly. You can even see a face starting to appear there, see that? In that half shadow? But we'll make use of those lumps and things. But like I said, it has to happen in a couple of phases. The good thing is it dries like plastic and it's readily paintable. So quite an ornery material because look, often, it sticks to the knife, but yeah, it's really getting there. And you can see that walking posture. It's important to give an impression of movement. However small, a turned head, a raised foot, arms not in balance, some impression of movement. Anyway, this character here, when the aircraft goes up, they're gonna be right down the front of the, um, of the, uh, of the scene and you can see how that's starting to work aircraft in the back propellers spinning things unloading that's pretty well the shot just about haven't got a background yet and it goes in a bit it's about that i have to drop those elevators we'll have to see so what i do is i just slowly turn the figure around you can see where there's holes I just slowly fill it in, basically. I just had a look at some reference. I need these um, legs to be a bit thicker. Because this is a woman. I noticed that um, some of the peacekeepers in Timor um, are women, which is great. So I thought, why not? Let's do one for the girls. Let's hear it for the girls. It's actually, for such a difficult sculptural material, it's wonderful. Because once it's dry, you can carve it. It's like a soft plastic. It's fantastic. Mm, anyway, I don't know. Everyone finds their own way of doing things. But I kind of like these informal techniques. Maybe it's not the best way to do things, though, because this is an adhesive compound. So look, see how it sticks to the knife. But that's all right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'll just let that dry. So that's really not quite ready, okay? So what I've done is I've put the bulk on. Now watch what happens with the armature. It's a pure fuse wire armature. What I do is... I try and tangle the stuff into the wire. It's important this stuff gets caught up in the wire. Don't worry if it's not too good. The idea is that you actually build a base. There it goes. Don't need too much. Start building. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Oh, it's so funny. It's like some kind of weird robot. 
C3PO or something because it's got that wire frame but um, it works particularly well because it's a rubbery sort of compound this white stuff's rubbery and the flame frame is entirely flexible so you can actually push them into shape once this stuff starts to settle anyway yeah this is my own sculptural technique mind you and it's probably very unhandy if I if I think about things it's a bit of a jump here but this is how spiky man has eventuated see him over here this is spiky man since then I've stuck him down onto the baseboard and here's the original figure what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through and just paint their faces start by painting the faces I've mixed a colour using ochre, white and pink that's my flesh tone it's not perfect but it's not too bad I'm not going to worry too much about um, painting within the lines or anything Oh, cut his thumb off there's um spiky man I might make him a bit darker neck of course um, it doesn't matter if I miss a few things here or just go over edges here because um oh, Jeep's fallen out see the Jeep this is our Land Rover well it's not really it's just some chunks of wood really matchstick axles chunk of carved balsa wood the other side's not even painted and there's nothing inside it of course we don't really need it so what we've got is that that's the view that you'll see it from So that goes in the back there. Now the dudes. So you can do this easily because this is quite light, this stuff. So we'll just wash in all the hands. And I'll know what I'll need to fill in too because they're pretty spiky still.
have just as well been in the body. So you kind of get the idea, don't you? You just sort of like... Here's another thing to look at just quickly before it... Oh, it's a bit hard to see. But that's... um. It's the pallet that would normally go inside the um, aircraft with the tension straps on it. That would go down on the ground. Let's pan out. Let's see if I can get it where it needs to be. It's looking good. It's kind of getting there. So I need a bit more of the nose in there. I want to see the door. The thing is, we're doing the blue berets for the United Nations. Oh, I don't like that colour, but it's not bad. Close. Close, but no prize. Oh gee, you can't see what I'm doing. Of course, I'm just sort of moving the thing around. I'm not thinking about it. All I'm going to do I'm just going to put a good layer of green over everything. Later on I'll come back and um, put in the other tones and then I'll brush in. Right. I had to stick the figures down. Well, because they were just had bits of wire sticking out of their feet, I've stuck the wire into the base and then built the feet on the ground so that they'd sit solidly. So the feet actually contact the ground solidly. Rather than build the figures and stick them down, I really wanted them to be solid on the earth. Yeah, That's strange, isn't it? Why would you do it? I don't know. See them bouncing around here. They're very bouncy. Oops, I overdid it. So they're the fatigues, they call them fatigues. Hmm, wonder why. Must make you tired. But you probably can see already how it breaks up the human shape. I mean, I guess it's important to see that in a context. Maybe in the jungle where somebody would be functioning. Interestingly, Australian troops that were assigned to the Gulf War didn't have correct uniforms, so... A long time ago, I believe. Imagine how these things would be in the desert. Hmm, very interesting. But I also start thinking really weird stuff like, um, so does somebody go out and think, hey, they're going to war, I need to design a pattern which is um, ideal for hiding soldiers. And they do research about what looks best, I guess.
or maybe it's the armed forces themselves that tender out, but they produce the actual research to see which pattern's most effective. Okay, you notice the sky of Timor. It's been painted in a number of glazes. What we have here is a yogurt container full of the sky paint. I mix it with varnish and you get that see-through quality to it. If I pull it up close, you might be able to notice that. I'm using a palette, which is just a throwaway piece of paper plate. But on the palette, you can see the different colors that I've used in the sky, not the greens, of course, but over here, I'm mixing in a large body, but the largest pieces of paint go into the yogurt container. The sky, if I take that closer, you can see it's actually got a bit of a see-through look to it. That's because there's about six layers of paint there, each of them glazed with some kind of varnish. And that gives it that depth of blue that I'm looking for. What I'm going to try to do now, I'm going to try and make smoke. So I need a number of things. These are beautiful clouds up here. They're working beautifully. Now the idea with the sky, of course, is to slip it behind our scene. So that looks so much more real. You can appreciate that now. If I frame in, I can't really because the format's a bit wrong. Let's see, but you get start to get the impression, don't you? So if I frame in, I'm not getting the full height of the dudes. But it is giving you the idea that I need large plane. It's good. So now I'm just going to put some smoke in under the wing because when they arrived in Timor, what they found was that city was still burning. So there was a pall of smoke across the ground. So there's the scene. Let's have a look at these dudes. I guess I'll be looking at the plane from about that angle. And it looks much more realistic. Now I wanted to just um, rotate these figures because remember what I did was I poked the wire into the bases here at the feet and then I made plastic feet for them by using filler. Extension ramps, these are pieces of paper painted with PVA white glue and then sprayed aluminium. Now let's just rotate those figures. See the squashed plane, but we'll have a look at the front of these dudes. It's a lovely scene though. It works so nicely against that sky. Good shadows. Look at the front of this guy. Do you see that? There's nothing there. And that sky works damn well. So I'll rotate that. See it sort of fall into focus. It's about there that I'm looking at. About there. Still see the nose of the plane. Tail plane's up in the air. But I'm not going to capture that truck somehow. So I'm going to, I think I've lost the uh, four wheel drive. So I don't know, but I do need that nose. Okay. On the propellers. Got to go back. Once again, the best white I have for this job has been a housing undercoat. So the white paint I'm using is actually normally used to undercoat houses, but it mixes beautifully. I think it's maybe the quality of the paint. Seems better than even my artist's quality paints. So what I'll do is I'll put some of that white down to start on, on the palette. I'll mix that with varnish to make it a bit transparent because these cloud colors are all transparent. So I'll start with some varnish in the white to make it translucent good drop of varnish so I mix that colour through add just a touch of brown because there's a purpley sort of shadow I'm looking for see that's too brown add a bit of pink it's got that purple tinge and I've just got to make it dirty so I'll add some black like that. Touch of black. 
not too much. See that? Now, still too brown, but I want a dirty sort of smoky colour. It's too clean on the um, reference I've got. See how it kind of merges like um, that sort of That's like the base of that smoky cloud. See the brush strokes coming through? Like that. Bit more black, bit more brown, mix it through. It's going to be greyer than this. This is a start. See the black on the edge of the brush there? I want that just a bit darker. And it has an origin. The origin is somewhere under that plane. That's it, nice and dark. Now, a bit more glazing medium, which is that varnish, so I'll just put that down onto the palette. Varnish medium, black and brown. Okay, let's go again. Right underneath there, what I want is I want a base to this smoke. It's got to be like really sooty, sort of. See that? So right underneath that, I want a sooty, sooty dark grey base. See that? That's it, right underneath there. And those glazes, they just, oh, it's drying it off like crazy. It's not bad, that's good. So what I need is I need a pure glaze now. I need almost pure glaze. I'm going to make this smoke rise up off there. A bit of water, a lot more glaze. Okay, let's try it again. Get the smoke to rise straight up off there. Nice and smooth. Just like um, sooty, sooty smoke working its way up into the heaven. That's the one. Through the base of the cloud, you need dark sections. Smoke is very heavy. It might carry a long way, but it tends to settle. It doesn't like it's not like um doesn't rise. It's heavier than air, so once it cools down it starts to settle down. Might be just a bit too maybe I've overdone that. That's it, just nice and sooty. Sooty base out of there. A bit more black. Not bad, okay. Let's get to rise up a bit more. So, can you see how that's starting to work? That's the smoke drawing its way across. I find this bit really scary. I'm going to put the cloud in now. Yeah, I keep saying the word scary, don't I? It's just, but it's just part of it. I don't know. It really is scary sometimes. <sighs> scary is the word. Go back to the grey, get some of the glaze happening.
and that's looking good. Now what I'm going to try and do is put some pure white in over the top. Let's see if I can get it to work. This is like the light, the light hitting this stuff and just making it like, I don't know, magic and it's not, it's destruction, it's smoke from something, something burning. It's a real force, isn't it? It's that nature's force stuff. Okay, now I just need a good white, a good, oops, pure white here. See if I can get it on top of here. And up through here a bit. Oddly enough, just little traces of it. That should be enough. There you go, let's head a paint a cloud.